to Kagito Design, the video series where we talk about all things tabletop. This is a new series where we're going to invite you to join us on the game creation journey, all the way from the initial concept to the final production and sale. We are going to give you an inside look into the business of board games. We will be aiming to create a small card-based game from scratch, so if you are an aspiring designer, self-publisher, or just want to follow along with a new tabletop game creation, then this is the series for you. So this is the plan. We are in the final production stages for our latest flagship game, Solar 175. Now this is a bag building, area control, legacy game for one to five players, set in a not too distant dystopian future. It is a giant monster of a game, far bigger than anything we have created in the past. And the real selling point is the world building. The game is full of gorgeous artwork and rich narrative to give players a rich, open world to explore and adapt to their own ends. We even created a full-size magazine to accompany the game to further draw players into that Solo 175 universe. As part of the Kickstarter Deluxe version, which is coming early 2022, we are aiming to gift backers a smaller card game to accompany this behemoth. Now, this smaller card game would be set in the same universe as Solo 175 and explore one small detail of this world in more depth. This further adds to the richness of the world building. This is the game we are going to be designing in this series with you. So, what are the first steps when designing a game? I always begin with one simple three-word question, theme or mechanic? Answering this will open up the doors to creating a detailed design brief. So what do I mean by theme or mechanics? Well, this is often the two different starting points designers use when making a game. Do you have a cool idea for a theme you want to set the game in? If so, this will be the driving force of your game and you will focus on building mechanics around that theme to best suit your game. A really good example of this style of design would be the epic scythe by Stonemaier Games. Jamie Stegmaier was inspired by the fantastic artwork of Jacob Rosalski. His incredible evocative images of an alternate 1920s steampunk Europe are exactly the sort of thing any game designer would love to build a game around. In this case, Stegmaier took inspiration from games like Terra Mystica to find the exact mechanics to bring this universe to life. Now, the second place to start is the mechanics. Now, in this approach, you have a cool idea for a new game mechanic that you want to try out. Now, the aim then is to find the theme that will best allow you to show this mechanic off to its full potential. This is a less common way of starting a game design, but a good example of this could be Race for the Galaxy by Tom Lehman. This game was innovative in its use of simultaneous card play which drives the game forwards and removes player downtime entirely. Something which is great if you are as impatient about analysis paralysis as I am. So both approaches have their benefits and their drawbacks. Starting with a the theme is probably easier and has the benefit of allowing you to craft the mechanics to very closely fit the theme effectively. These games will often have a close connection between the theme and the mechanics. But the mechanics themselves will often be less innovative. Games which begin with mechanics, conversely, can often have very unique and innovative mechanics. But sometimes these will feel a little detached from the theme of the game, and the themes can end up feeling a little bit tacked on. For our game, the solution is simple. We will be starting with the theme. The game must be set in Solar 175, the universe, and so we need to think of an interesting element of that world that is not explored fully in Solar 175. So with the theme being decided as a starting point, the next step is to create a short design brief. 
Now, this brief will help focus our creativity towards a specific vision and help us to understand what success will look like when or if we achieve it. If you are thinking about designing a game, then this is often an overlooked but very, very important first step. So here is the design brief for our game. Number one, we always put this first, the game must be fun. If it isn't fun to play, then what is the point? Number two, the game needs to focus on an area of the game world which is not fully explored in Solar 175. And this will help flesh out the game even further. Number three, the game needs to be quick to learn to play. Solar 175 is a big, complex game, so this should be a light accompaniment. Number four, the game must be small and not involve large numbers of components. And this will help us to keep shipping costs down for our customers. Number five, the artwork needs to match the style and the complexity of Solar 175. And number six, the game should provide something more than just entertainment. Players should leave that game table with a little more knowledge or even an improved skill. This is a target we set in all of our games. We want to make sure that players feel the time they invest into playing our games is well spent. And there it is. The journey starts here. Now in the next episode, we will be exploring the aspect of the world that we want to develop a game about and the first stages of the design process. So if you are interested in designing along with us and being part of the production of this game, then please follow along in the comments. And did we miss anything important from the design brief? Are there other places to start other than theme or mechanics? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.